Are you thinking about pursuing music full time and maybe even quitting your day job, but wondering if it's possible? In this interview, I take you behind the scenes of the Rustic Songbird podcast where I talk to John Martin Keith all about how you can make a living in the music industry and what that looks like. So I hope you enjoy this talk, this conversation. I hope you get a lot out of it. I would love to hear what you think in the comments. And I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel for even more videos like this coming soon. Let's check it out. My guest on the show today is John Martin Keith. He is a songwriter, a recording artist, he teaches music, and he's just started a new podcast, which we're going to talk about on the show today, all about how you can make a living in the music industry. And this is a topic I've really been wanting to talk about on this show and thought, wow, this is perfect for the audience because we're all looking to do more with our music and to be able to make a living at it is a dream for so many people. And so, um, Marty, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Lydia. I appreciate it very much. Well, tell our listeners a little bit about you and how you got started in music and where this all began. Sure. So, um, like I said, my name is John Martin Keith. For people who don't know, that's my, that's my full name, and that's what I go by with all my music-related stuff. But in day-to-day -day life, I go by Marty. So, yes, you can. Uh, anybody listening can call me Marty. Uh, it gets confusing. I have three first names. Um, <laughs> and, but I respond to pretty much anything. So. I am from uh, a town called Paducah, Kentucky, which is about two, I live in N Nashville, just south of Nashville in Franklin, so about two and a half hours uh, away is Paducah, Kentucky, where I'm from. And most people know Paducah because of another Paducah guy named Stephen Curtis Chapman. And um, so I grew up, his dad, uh, Stephen Curtis, is, and his brother Herbie Chapman, their, their dad, Herb Chapman Sr., was my guitar teacher growing oh, up. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, and so I started when I was four years old. I'm the youngest student to ever start guitar lessons at Chapman Music in Paducah. And I, so I still wow. hold the record to that. Um, I'm very, <laughs> very proud of that. Four <laughs> but, years old. I mean, you did start young. That is very yeah, young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I took guitar lessons there for many years. And then, uh, you know, always wanted to do music from the time I was five. I was just telling my daughter this the other day because we were at Opryland um, Hotel the other day. And... Uh, my dream when I was five years old was to be on the Grand Ole Opry playing electric guitar for another artist. At the time, I didn't think that I would myself be an artist, but um, but I wanted to be on the Grand Ole Opry playing guitar for somebody. And so I just I saw we were by that the other day, and so I shared that with her. And um, you know, I still haven't accomplished that particular dream yet, but that's and that's okay. You know, just maybe in time we'll get there. That you know, if if so, great. If if not, that's fine as well. But um, but I always wanted to do music. And that's all I've ever wanted to do. I've been very blessed to do that. God has been very good. Um, so I grew up, you know, again, taking lessons, playing music my whole life. When I was like 15, 16, I started doing talent shows um, in around the area and um, you know, just playing out whatever I could in schools and choir and band and did all those types of things that everybody typically does, uh, which is such an important thing. We talk about this on, and we'll, we'll get into this a little bit later, I'm sure, um, with my podcast, but one of the main things that I like to talk about with my guests on my show is is getting their story and the history mm -hmm. of how they came up and what got them into music to begin with, just like what we're doing. And yeah. it's such an important component of, of starting young, you know, and getting lessons and getting that training in the in the inspiration to want to create music and want to play music, you know, because that's what leads you down that path. You know, you have to start somewhere, obviously, and the younger you can start. Uh, the more proficient you're going to be at at your craft, so that's something that I, it's always big for me. So, um, you know, I'm a guitar teacher as well now, and mm -hmm. so and I have a lot of students and love teaching, and so that's something that I always am always pushing for them is to just do the best that you can, and you know, really, really soak it in and and put it into practice into what you want to do because that's that's the beginning of your career is just taking. Right. You know, and I love that you're passing it on to people that are just getting started and helping people um, learn guitar and be more proficient at it. And especially just inspiring them that they can do it and mm -hmm. say, hey, here's a good way to start and here's the next step. Like sometimes that's all you need. And so um, just having that one person cheering you on and saying, here's the next thing is yeah. really important. And so you're doing that to a lot of people. So I just wanted to... Um, to say, you know, that is so helpful and yeah. I'm glad that you're doing that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, uh, after, you know, after high school and, you know, I went to college, um, 
went to Bible college, got a degree in Bible doctrine and youth ministry at, at first, um, and was out, you know, playing and leading worship. And I got it was in the in the Christian music worlds where I was living in the, the majority of the time, and um, doing a lot of of CCM music and and worship and things like that, and um, and then end up going to a, a Bible college in Joplin, Missouri. Got Ozark Christian College. Went there for two years and got a, a music ministry degree. Um, you know, and just all those things. It's like a lot of people listening. You know, to either your podcast or even to mine, different ones. It's like you know, why do you share the all the details of your history? Like because all those things matter. Mm-hmm. You know, they you know all those things have shaped who we are. Right. And whatever path that we've gone down, it's like if I hadn't gone to to Kansas City to college, if I hadn't gone to Ozark Christian College, you know, for, for school and for music and learning those bits and pieces that that make me who I am now, you know, I'd be a completely different person if it hadn't been for those things. So yeah. um, I had a band because, again, like, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, um, at Ozark, I had a band called Hand to the Plow. Um, we together for about two years while we were, while I was in school and um, you know we were out touring and we recorded an album and you know had a blast and that was a very you know life-changing part of my life at the time. And was that the after, first time you had released music too? No. With that band? Uh, well with that band um, but I had when I was 16 actually I recorded my first uh, cassette tape. I did a, a okay single, like just a single song at yes. in Paducah. Um, awesome. So I, did, I did a couple of those when I was 16, 17. Okay. And, um, and then when I went to Kansas City for, for school um, for that first year, I put out um, a four song cassette tape. And uh, that was my first, like, that, this is my, what I'm selling. You know, this was yeah. big, <laughs> you know, because you were guys were touring tours. So you were uh, selling it. Me, yeah, but I was selling okay. it and playing out and doing um, leading worship at a camp and different things like that. I love hearing stories like this, like the origin story of like how you got started, because it's so encouraging to people that are just um, maybe recording something for the first time or like putting something out. Like that's where we all have to start is like have something to sell when you're out playing gigs. Sure. And and it's completely different nowadays because you can do it on your computer and anybody can sort of figure out, you know, how. now we have the internet and streaming sites and downloads and stuff. And that, you know, is still fairly new. Yeah, but yeah, back in the day, it's like, you know, you had to go to an actual recording studio and have someone, have a producer, an engineer kind of guide you through that process because we didn't, you know, didn't have the technology that we have nowadays to do that kind of stuff. But so that was, you know, that was a fun time back back then. And, uh, and it was a big deal, you know, for, for me, it was a big deal. Yeah. So, you know, after doing, you know, doing that and then going to, to Ozark and having Hand to the Plow and touring together and putting out that album and doing some things like that, um, you know, that kind of stuff opened up doors to go in and play a lot of, a lot of churches, a lot of youth camps and leading worship. And that's been a big thing for me is leading, leading worship for youth camps and um, around the country. And that's still, I mean, over 20 years now I've been doing that. And so awesome. that, that kind of all stems from that part of my life in you mm-hmm. know, college and uh, out in Kansas City and Missouri and those things. So, um, but after that, I moved in 2000, I moved here to Nashville and set my path on music and have never looked back you know well i'll take that back i i I briefly moved away for about a year after i was here for about a year then i moved away because i wanted to pursue some acting stuff so i moved i moved away and did that for a bit and then and then came back (laughs) back and then um but it was always a part of it even when i was out um pursuing the acting thing out in uh, wilmington north carolina it's kind of at what time it was um for dawson's creek and um one Tree Hill and a lot of movies and stuff were shot out there. And, uh, but even during that time, I was still out playing and touring and doing those things. But when I came back to Nashville, it's like, you know, this is what I wanted to do, you know. And when I first moved to town in 2000, um, one of the things that, and I talked about this with a lot of guests on, the, on my podcast as well, is like, you know, what, what is it that really helps set somebody on that path if they're wanting to do music for a living? Because mm-hmm. focus on the creative side and the business side and both because you can both. yes on either or or both you know and for independent artists like ourselves you really have to have both sides of that you have to have the creative and the business side it's really really important mm-hmm. to have those both of those things down at least some understanding of the business side of things because you're having to do everything yourself you don't have a team of people around you yeah. you know you don't have you know booking agents and publishers and publicists and marketing people and you know 
Like in, you're it. Yeah. You're the whole team yeah. at first. I mean, yeah. I am, even now, 20 years into it, I am, I'm still everything, you know? So you have to understand how at least some of those things work, you know? Mm -hmm. and, um, and if you don't, then find people around you that, that do, that can kind of help guide you in those things. So, um, but one of the really important things was when I first moved to town is I had an internship. And that's one of the things I talk about a lot is people, um, you know, wanting to get into music, especially on the business side, not so much right. on the creative, but if you're wanting to go work at a, at a record label or at a publishing company, a publicist, whatever, you, you really, most of the time you have to have an internship out of, co you know, during college um, or coming out of college at least. And that gives you some experience and kind of gets your foot in the door, those types of things. And, um, and that helps kind of build those relationships with people. Right. Cause and you're so, meeting people that are actually in the industry working in it every day. Yeah. And you already had the creative side. You have been making music your whole life since four playing the guitar right. and then touring for so many years. So you had that down pat pretty much. And then you were here in Nashville to build relationships and meet people and yeah. uh, get involved in the business side. So what was that like for you going from, um, you know, like getting into the Nashville scene, building those relationships and like learning the music industry side. What was so, the biggest like sure. shift for you? Well, that, that shift is, the, was the internship. When I came to town, I came to town from Missouri, from Joplin, Missouri. Um, and then where did you work for the internship? Well, okay. So when I was at Ozark at the college, they had mm -hmm. posted, uh, someone had posted a flyer for an internship with a company called Embassy Music here in Nashville. And I was like, okay. I'm going to Nashville and it's a Christian music label and that's what I was wanting to pursue. Okay. And uh, so I called, uh, I called the, the label and told them, hey, I'm coming, I'm moving to, to town. I'd love to talk with you about the internship. And so they brought me in and they hired me um, to do that. And because of that, and I was just telling my wife about this the other day, it's like 20 years later, I'm still some of my best friends are because of, are still from that internship or from that label. Wow. You know, so, um, so that internship was a huge impact on me because the people, this is something I tell people all the time, the people that when you first move to town and that you get connected with that are doing the same thing that you're doing, that is your class. Those are your, mm -hmm. those are your, that's your tribe that you're going to ri rise up with. And um, when you have success, that in turn gives them some success and vice mm -hmm. versa. So we're always kind of trying to lift each other up. And always yeah. helping each other. Well, I love what you yeah. said, um, just like in the marketing side of things, um, how you just said you saw a flyer mm -hmm. for this record label mm -hmm. out of college. You made a phone call mm -hmm. and called them and got it. So it wasn't like you were putting your resume out lots of places. You didn't call lots of people. It's like you saw one flyer, you made one phone call, you got that position. I mean, moments like that are defining moments that we don't realize when it's happening. But now looking back, you're like, yeah. that was the time where everything changes. So I just wanted to, um, to kind of share how simple that is. It's like just picking up the phone, making the phone call, like asking and uh, just saying, hey, I'm moving to town. I'm available. Um, it might not happen the first time for everybody, sure. but I really believe that when it's the right time, things fall into place like that. Sure. Yeah, it's true. And uh, polite persistence is something yes. that we talk about a lot, you know. Um, and one of the things, one of the things that I've learned the past few years is because I'm, a, I'm also a booking agent. So I do booking for myself, but I have mm -hmm. a, a roster of some people that I do some booking for. And one of the things that I learned um, a couple of years ago from, from someone was that when you're when you're trying to reach out to people, whether it be through phone calls or emails, is just the reality that this is another person you're talking to. It's another human. Right. You know, it's you know, even though they might be the big wig of some major corporation or or music company or whatever it is, they're, they're still, still a person. They're still a person. Yeah. You know, and they have wants and needs and desires, and they have a family. And you know, so when you're trying to reach out to somebody, do it on the on a personal level. Keep it short and brief, and keep it sweet. You know, and that kind of thing. But just talk to them like, you know, like a person, you know, have a conversation with somebody. Don't, don't spill your guts <laughs> out, you know, in two paragraphs and say, you know, and just blah, what can you do for me? This is what I'm looking for. And, you know, but if you can have a, a good conversation and start building a relationship, because that's what the music business is built on. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is relationships. Everything yeah. about relationships in this business. 
and offering value. Like you said, like, what can you do to help them or make their life easier or, you know, uh, think about it from their perspective instead of what they can do for you. That's really good advice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I know you've got a lot of things going on with music. So uh, you've kind of briefly touched on you're doing a new podcast now. So tell me all about that, what it's called and what you're doing with it so far and kind of what the big vision is for the podcast. Sure. So the podcast is called You Can, in in big capital letters, you can make a living in the music industry because it's true. You can do it. It's not easy. It's very hard, um, but it is doable. And if that is something that you are really truly desiring to be a part of is, is in the music industry. And again, it can be on the creative side or on the business side or a mixture of the two. Um, a lot of people find out, especially kind of in the college age, um, when they're in that college, you know, phase of trying to figure out what they're doing. They, a lot of people will go and they're trying to get, you know, a composition degree or a vocal degree or something like that. And then they realize, you know what, I, this isn't really what I like. It's not what I thought it was going to be. I prefer marketing and business and I'm really good at this. I'm really good at crunching numbers, whatever. And so they kind of shift their focus maybe from one to the other. Um, and I think that's a good time to be able to figure those things out. So, um, so the podcast is really helping people, helping listeners figure out what it is that they're wanting. What are they trying to pursue and to have guests come on to share their stories that have been successful throughout their careers telling what all that they've done, you know, just kind of like what we're doing now. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like them telling, this is their history. This is all the different, you know, stepping stones and, and markers in their life that have allowed them to get to where they are now and all the different jobs that they have done, you know, and they did this for a little bit. Well, that opened up a door to this because they built a relationship and that opened up this door and this, this, mm -hmm. this, this, until they finally get to wherever this that they are now. And they've been successful at that and they're able to have a career and so they're, they're sharing their stories, but they're also sharing um, practical advice, step-by-step -step mm -hmm. advice and tips to help people that are trying to either trying to get into it or that are actively doing it. But are sometimes, because again, 20 years in plus years, I'm still hitting, I'm still hitting my head on the wall sometimes. There's like that glass ceiling sometimes. You yeah. Know. Like you're always learning. There's always more. Well, there's that. And you're, sometimes you're, you feel like you're stuck. You know, there's like, there's this ceiling. There's only so much you can do at that level. Right. And you can't, sometimes you're having a hard time trying to figure out how do I get past this particular level? Right. Mm -hmm. And so the guests that come on are, it's a mixture. I've got celebrities that have been on. I've got working class musicians that have been on um, a lot of behind the scenes people like on the business side that nobody would ever know who they are necessarily, yeah. um, you know, by name until you, until you hear the podcast, you're like, oh, that's what this person does. Well, he's the mm -hmm. star. He's like the head guy, you know, one of the head guys of a record label. He's the guy who signs the artist to a label. And okay, why do you do what you do? And when you're trying to sign an artist, what is that you're looking for? So that yeah. when people that are listening to the show, say it's an artist or a songwriter, they're wanting to get signed to either a publishing deal or a record deal. Um, and they're like, I just don't know how to get my foot in the door to do that. I don't know how to talk to that mm. person, whatever. Then the people that are on the show are those people that are telling you, here's what you need to do. Yeah, you're bringing those people on to share the information of this is the website to go to or this is how you contact someone, this is how you approach or even how you ask, like what to say when they're asking. And so that's really valuable to somebody that's getting started. And I love that your show is focused on why you're doing it because that's what's going to motivate people to actually put in the work. Because like you said, it takes a lot of work and you know, 20 years in, you're still doing a lot of work on it. You know, and if you didn't love it, you would have quit a long time ago right? Yeah, I, so I, like you have to do it because you love it yeah, and I've you're had, putting in all that work because of that yeah. mission and that why. I've had multiple guests <laughs> come on the show and say, if you can do anything else, do it. And be, and be happy, <laughs> do it. Yeah. But if, but if you can't, then do music. And hmm. for me, ultimately that's, you know, and on some degree, you know, I have to do music on some level because that's yeah. what, yeah, I can't do anything else. And I say the same thing. I say, I can't not do this right? because it's just like, you know, ingrained in me and for you too, like as creative people, like we have to express that and it might seem crazy from the outside, but then those of us that are in the music industry get it, you know, yeah. we do it for the love of it. Sure. And one of the other things uh, with the podcast that I always tell people, it's, it's the things that you can't find on a Google search. 
Yes. Right? Because it's, I mean, and I, I myself, I will Google certain information, tr certain questions, and there's no answer to it. It keeps bringing up all this other stuff. And so that's what I always tell my guests. I'm looking this for as much detail as you're willing to share and the stuff that you can't find on a Google search. And they're like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, totally. And so, and they get it, you know, because yeah, even when you go to, you go to college for music, there's life, practical life application that doesn't necessarily get learned in the classroom. Right. You know, there's just certain things you can't learn, but when you learn, when you get out in the real world, you know, then that's the information that they're able to share, you know, that, to, that I'm giving to my audience. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I love it. I'm excited about it. I'm, I think we're, um, we're about 18 episodes in currently that are, that are released. Um, mm -hmm. I've got about 15 or 20 more that are finished that are in the queue waiting, just waiting to come out. That's yeah. awesome. And they come out once a week, Is it a weekly show once a week, every Monday morning they come out. So, okay, perfect. So I do want to send everybody over to that. And the name of the podcast is you can make a living in the music industry. That's correct. So John Martin, Keith, you can make a living in the music industry. Go check that out on your podcast app. If you're already listening to the podcast, you're already there. So go look it up and I'll link it in the show notes as well. So people can go and check it out. That sounds like the perfect type of show for my listeners. And so I'm really excited to share that with them. Yeah. And go, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say one of the cool things, because again, it, it covers, I'm trying to cover all areas of the industry. So if I can just real quickly share, here's a list of all the things that I do as, as a musician that allow me to make a living in music full time. Okay. I am an artist. I'm a songwriter. I'm a producer. I am a booking agent. I'm a guitar teacher. Uh, I do, I do the podcast. Do a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, and oh gosh, there's, there's more, um, a lot of, a lot of different things. Oh, I write music for TV and film sync stuff. And, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, that's it. again, that, that covers a whole nother world in the music. Yeah, for well, sure. That, that encompasses being an artist, a songwriter, a producer of its own, own thing, mm -hmm. so sort of a separate, separate world in, in some ways, but Right. So, so some of them cross and some of them are separate. Yeah. Things. So, but it's for people that are, you know, whether you're trying to be an artist in any genre or a songwriter of any genre or the sync world on trying to get into TV and film and commercials and ads and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Or if you're wanting to work as a, as a publisher or for a publisher, you know, a music photographer, you know, all, anything that's related to music that you mm -hmm. can make a living, then, then this is, podcast is for that person. So Awesome. And I love that you uh, talked about having multiple streams of income because that was my next question for you was um, not putting all your eggs in one basket and just, you know, hoping to get one cut on radio, you know, or whatever right. people think like that you have to have, but to have certain things set up to be making you money along the way. And then like, if there's a low month in one thing, then there's a higher month somewhere else. And it's like coming from multiple places. So yeah. You're creating multiple types of things. You're putting out multiple things uh, to build your audience as an artist, but also you're teaching guitar lessons and that can be a regular thing. And it's still related to music. It's still using your gifts um, and helping people. Yeah. So there's lots of different ways that people can make money with their music, even if it's something different, like you teach guitar lessons and you get paid for that. And then you use that to pay for something else with your music. Yeah. You know, so I thought that was a really good point to make. Can yeah. you expand on a little bit more of like how you set up your different streams of income? Because I think that would be helpful. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, is I'm a worship pastor. I, I mean, I forgot to mention that, but that's like a huge, right now, that's a, a huge part of my income. Yeah. Right Cause that's another regular thing and you can help and serve in that way as well. Right. And so about 11 years ago, I started my company, Edenbrook Music, which is now Edenbrook Productions. Um, because it encompasses everything that I do. But when okay. we started, um, I started as a guitar teaching business. And because um, it was like right in the middle of 2008, right, you know, right in the middle of the economic fallout that we were going through at the time. And, um, and we built a business in the economic fallout, you know, which was like unheard of, you know, that way I was doing that. And I ended up having, within like a two year period, I had like 35 students every week that I was doing. So that was my full-time thing was just teaching. And that's all that I was doing. Um, 
and then a, a few years ago, I wanted to get back out and start touring again and start leading worship for churches again and doing those types of things. So I started shifting my focus. And so the teaching started going down and, and then the uh, touring and leading worship, you know, kind of came up, came up and kind of took over. And so, um, you know, I still teach. I don't teach as much as I did, but I still do have some students. And I still take new students when, when I can. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, that's, it was set up to, you know, let me make a living doing what I do, what I'm good at and what I enjoy doing. Because mm-hmm. sitting, in, and there's nothing wrong with sitting in a cubicle. There's nothing wrong with driving a school bus. There's nothing wrong with, you know, any, any job in the world. But like we talked about earlier, it, like I said, if you can do something else, do it. If you can't. Yeah. But your goal was to make money by doing music in right. some way. Right. right. And so it's, it's changed over know, time. Yeah. But doing anything else other than that, I was beating my head on a wall because mm. you know, it's like, because I was just like miserable if I had to do something else. And, yeah. time, and sometimes I was doing other things outside of music while I was building up the, mm-hmm. the teaching sure. business. You know, and that's part of it. You just have to do that kind of stuff. I, taught, yeah. I, I delivered pizzas for six years while I was doing that and then touring as well, part time. Mm-hmm. And you know, so it's just, it's just getting, you know, different things that allow you to make some income over here and yeah. then you save it, you get some income over here. And it's just, you're constantly trying to find new stuff. Um, it's different. You know, if you can work for a company and be on a salary, that's completely different. You can do one, maybe two things and you're okay. You know, in music, if you can go work for a publishing company or for a record label, but that puts you on a salary, that's one thing. But most of us don't get that luxury. You know, so we have to figure out how to piece things together. And so mm-hmm. um, it's finding out what you're good at and really focusing on that. I, honestly, I probably, uh, I've got too many things that I do. I, I mean, I really should pare down some things. And, um, but right now, you know, it, it works, but if, you know. You're maintaining right now, but to I'm grow it, you're saying like, you'd have to change some things around. Yeah. I mean, there's some things that, I, you know, in in time here pretty soon, I'm probably going to have to pull out of a couple of things just so I can start focusing more directly on others to build those things up of what I'm yeah. really, really wanting to do. Because some things I do, I do just because I need to, you mm-hmm. know, and, and that's just being honest, you know, I think. Yeah. And that's just a season too. I think that's a really good thing to share. Honestly, like sometimes you'll do things for, for a while that you need to keep going. And then sometimes it's time to say, Hey, it's a good thing, but it's not the best for right now or for the next season or the next step yeah so i think it's really good yeah and sometimes you know if you're really good at something it may not be what your you may not be your favorite thing to do um you might not enjoy it really at all but if you're, you're really good at it and it it makes good income for you um i mean that's those are things that you have to evaluate on an individual basis right it's a trade-off because you have you have time and you have to decide how to spend your time and where you're going to be making money and also like how are you going to fund your music stuff you know and so I think it's important to just kind of show the real side of that is like it is a juggling act sometimes yeah where as things change you have to say yes to some things that might not be you know your ideal but it could be for a short term or you could say no to things that are good, but aren't the best, you know? Right. Um, and so I've been having to say no to some things, but that allows me to say yes to other things. Mm-hmm. And so just like having that balance, finding that balance of, um, you know, what is it that I want? Like you talked about finding your goal and trying to make sure that everything that you're doing is at least moving towards that goal or helping in some way. Right. It, yeah. And if it's not, um, you know, again, sometimes you have to do those things for a season um, in order to pay the bills. But yeah. when, when that season is over, if you can let go of those things so that you can focus on the, the main things that you're wanting to accomplish, then, you know, then by all means. And, um, you know, we all have to do, we all have to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, part, just part of it. Yeah. Can you speak for a moment to the creatives listening who love making art and music and love making things, but are not on the business savvy side. And, um, you know, this is something that I've been working through the last uh, year or so is like getting more, um, more intentional with the numbers side, with the business side. And so I know this is a big issue for a lot of creative people is like even breaking things down and making a budget, knowing what money's come in and what money's going out. Like we could do a whole podcast episode on that, but just quickly, uh, if you could share 
like some tips from this perspective of like making a living by doing music like uh what numbers advice could you give to people that are not as business savvy um that's a good question it's a big question yeah. but i want to hear your perspective on it yeah well <laughs> i am extremely blessed and my wife is is an accountant she is really good with numbers so she helps me um so i would say if you are not a numbers person yourself then find um, a good reputable accountant that can help make sure that you that you're keeping track of those types of things mm -hmm. thankfully i haven't had to go hire one because i'm married to, <laughs> I'm yeah married and my dad's a cpa so yeah. i was so, made to crunch yeah. the numbers more than i would have i think because of that yeah but i i mean that's extremely important because if you're if you're making money doing music or if it, it doesn't matter if you're just making money no, no matter what you do if you're blowing it and i used to blow my money okay um, I used to not be very good with money years ago. And, um, you know, once getting married was very helpful for me, actually. I mean, I was, I was good with money. I wasn't like, you know. It, but like it, you make it and spend it instead of like, once you're married, you have that responsibility. You've got a family. It changes uh, things. Yeah, it does. Um, and I'm very grateful for that, to be honest with you. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're married or single, but um, I think, having someone who is good with money that can help help you get on a budget. I mean, I'm a big Dave Ramsey guy. Um, yeah. <laughs> big believer in what he teaches and stuff. So, you know, definitely, definitely get on a budget. Stop spending money on stuff that doesn't, that, that's just wasting money on things, you know, because if you're, if you're trying to, to make a living in music and you're serious about it, you know, you're putting your, you need to put your money into the things that are going to help you further that career right don't go blow them on video games and going to the movies and going out to eat all the time and things like that when you can't afford to do it you know it's like okay well, if you got money that you can set aside for that that's great but if you can't and this is what you're trying to focus on uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna be honest with you the people that are willing to sac make those sacrifices so that they can focus on their career and put the money towards those things that are going to help further their career they're the ones that are going to be successful not those not the people that are blowing their money on things that don't matter. If yeah. That, does that make sense? Um, so that's a, that's a huge thing. Um, and I mean, as far as just like, you know, if you're a creative person and you're wanting, let's say if you're wanting to go out and tour or you're trying to go out and, and do touring, that kind of thing, um, you need to figure out, you know, what it is you think you're worth as an artist to go do a concert somewhere or to go lead worship if you're a worship pastor or a worship leader or something, that type, kind of thing. Um, you know, figure out what it is that you're wanting to charge for what it is that you do. Have a consistent, a, a consistent number amount um, mm -hmm. that you're going to charge. You know, don't be, I'm going to charge a $2,000 on this day and I'm going to charge $200 on this day for doing the same thing. Now, yeah. Have a consistent rate. Have a consistent rate. Um, now, there are times where you can go do things, you know, free free gigs that are, you know, helping people out do certain things. Like I, I work with the National Rescue Mission. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. And um, so you know, that's benefiting the co the community, and that's you giving back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and it's a huge blessing to to me, man. Yeah. Like just getting to go and because there's they do a coffee house, a men's coffee house there on Friday nights and so every now and then I get to go do that and um, you know and it doesn't pay anything, but the reward that I get for doing it because they're just so, man, it's just a it's a completely different audience and they are they're engaged you know it's like yeah you know that kind of thing is a reward in itself. Yeah. And if it lights you up, you know, you're giving back, you're, um, you know, spending your time doing something to encourage other people, but it also encourages you. So I think there's definitely room for that. And so even if you put a number on that, say, Hey, once a month, I'll do a free gig. I'll do a benefit concert. I'll do a volunteer thing like that. And then you know that you're going to build that in. Sure. Um, absolutely. And then, you know, but when you're out, you're trying to tour and you're trying to build, uh, you know, a fan base and a career and, um, steady income, those types of things. You just need to figure out, you know, what it is that you're worth. And, you know, if you don't know, um, talk to people, 
and yeah, see. you can always ask other musicians and say, hey, what would you charge for like an hour of singing at this place? Or like, if I'm traveling this far, how much would you charge? And right. there's different things. You can kind of get a ballpark idea and then make yeah. your own rate. You know, and don't charge, you know, don't say I'm going to charge, you know, Keith Urban rates or Garth Brooks rates or you know, some, some ridiculous. I mean, you amount. could. <laughs> I mean, but, it's up to you. But yeah, well, I think something reasonable for the market for that for range you, for where you are because i mean if, if your listeners that are i'm sorry i knocked my hit my uh, computer there um for your listeners you know that are that are musicians and artists trying to do it and if you live anywhere all over the country you know it's like well the, the market in nashville is different than the market in nebraska or yeah. virginia you know versus idaho you know it, there's going to mm-hmm. be different and if you're in a like in a local or regional market you know you have to to kind of feel out whatever it is that market is, you know, cause it's going to be different in different places. But if you can keep some sort of consistency, um, you know, be willing to, to maybe come down on your rate somewhat. If, you know, if you're like, you know, I'm a $2,000 guy, if I'm throwing that out there, if you're an artist and, you're, and you say, I'm, I'm worth, I think I'm worth $2,000 for a concert. Um, but, and I talked to a venue and they're like, well, we can only do 1200. Okay. Well, are you willing is that worth it to you? You know, to right. say, you have yeah. to decide, okay, are you going to do it anyway? Yeah. Or, you know, it's like, no, nah, thank you. I, I appreciate it. But uh, that's just under what we're able to do. And usually, you know, we, I try to set my amounts to what it is that allows me to be able to, to support my family and to mm-hmm. pay the bills, you know, yeah. and have, make some, make some extra that, that can set aside. That's the ultimate you know, what goal is right. to set, have money set aside that you're trying to save up. Um, and then that what covers, you know, what covers the expenses to get there, mm-hmm. and, you know, gas and food and travel and hotel and that kind of thing. And, you know, that kind of stuff. So if they can cover those things, then, you know, and again, it depends on how far into your career you are. If you're just mm-hmm. getting started, you're not going to charge 2000. You shouldn't, you know, right. um, you know, so maybe a couple hundred bucks to play yeah. for. It just depends on what it is, mm-hmm. you know, so you need to figure out where you are, what your market is. And, um, you know, if you talk to venues, you know, because a lot of times they're going to set it for you. They're like, well, this is what we pay. Right. Okay. Figure out if that's something that you're willing mm-hmm. to do and kind of start there and, and kind of go from there and build that fan base and then go, you know, um, one of the things I told people, uh, actually I told one of my guests on my, on my show is that when I started out, you know, a lot of people would do the local thing. They like doing, you know, their hometown and just kind of outside the area. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I personally didn't like doing that. I wanted to go out and tour. So I, I would call or email or do whatever, you know, cities out way outside. I ended up going to Kansas city and then I ended up going to Florida I ended up, you know, because I started meeting people and they're like, yeah. Oh, would you come, would you come to my place? You know, mm-hmm. out down in Florida. Absolutely. So that allowed me to start building these, these regions that I could go to. And so I built like this, you know, this touring route that I would mm-hmm. do every year, um, which allowed me to expand a little sooner than maybe some people can do. But er- again, it's different for everybody. Right. So you were going to some of the same places again with those relationships that you built. Like uh, if you're singing at a church or an event that's every year, you can go back. And so it wasn't like new places all the time, new people all the time. You were building those relationships and kind of going in a cycle. It was. And then, but in the process, I would try to find new places while I would be out there a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So I would do the place, you know, I would repeat the same places once a year, but when I go back. And add into that. I try to build on top of it and build in more places as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's such great practical advice because uh, when some people think of going on tour, they might think of like lots of new places and it has to be different places every time or something, but repeating those places is actually a really good strategy. So you're not doing all new ones all the time, but have like a, uh, just one that you know is going to be good, you know, like one that you've been to before and then add something new to that or kind of change it up based on their availability. Mm -hmm just make sure if you are going back to the same place again and again, that every time you go back, you've got new material to share with them. Because once you start playing the same stuff more than twice, and it's the same thing over and over and there's nothing new, then they're going to stop having you in. You've got to start, you've got to keep bringing new. Got to change it up. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. This is so much great advice and I really appreciate your time being on the show. And uh, I just want to give you a chance before we wrap up to uh, let everybody know some encouragement that you have for songwriters that are, uh, you know, really in it for the right reasons, wanting to grow their music and uh, just looking to take that next step. What would you say to them? 
Um, that's a good question. I think to know what you're looking to do, like if you're a songwriter and you're wanting to be in country music, then you need to be in the country music community. You need to be surrounding yourself with those types of people, those other, you know, those kinds of writers. Um, you know, if you're wanting to do music for a living and you're wanting to like actually like sign a record deal or sign a, a songwriting publishing deal, you know, you have to come to, to Nashville or LA or New York or a music city that does that for a living. You're not gonna be able to do that necessarily, you know, somewhere else, you know, that's outside of that in, in your hometown kind of thing. Um, touring is a little different. You know, if you're out touring, you can tour from anywhere, that's fine. Um, but if you're wanting to sign deals and be surrounded by, you know, this community, then you need to come to this community and be a part of it and find, you know, find the people that are doing what it is that you want to do and start building those relationships with people and finding your tribe. I mean, that's just, honest. I mean, I, yeah, you know, it sounds like it sounds, oh, sure. That sounds like the right thing to do, but I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you from experience, I'm telling you from every, um, nearly every single guest I've had on my show that they're going to tell you the same thing. So mm -hmm. that's just free advice. Um, you know, cause it works. That's just how it works. Well, that's the way it works. Again, yeah. the, the whole music business is built on relationships. You have to have great talent and you have to be able to build relationships and, and you know, that's, that's how it all works. And um, you know, you just can't just walk in and hand it someone a resume and, and they're going to hire you. That's just really not the way that things happen here. Um, most of the time at least. So, but you know, find the type of music you want to be a part of, find those people, um, go out and be a part of songwriter nights and those types of things. And find here's, what, here's a little bit of advice I'll, I'll share. If you're going to go do songwriter nights in Nashville, especially, um, there are certain ones to go to and there are certain ones not to go to, right? Cause there's some of them are the, the tourists go to and it's, you know, it's their show that they get to go listen and hear some songs and that's great. But there are certain ones that, that industry people, uh, they go in, on a regular basis and hang out and listen to music because they're trying to listen for people that they want to work with, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, come to town, find out what those things are, what those writer nights might be. And, um, and when you hang around people that are in the industry doing it, they'll tell you, they'll, they'll mm -hmm. let you know which ones th that they are and, um, you know, and start building those relationships. So that's, that's kind of the, the bottom the bottom line. Yeah, I met one of my favorite co-writers at a writer's round because there were probably a handful of people in the room listening, but they were other songwriters and we got to meet them. It wasn't about performing for an audience. It was about like showcasing, this is what I'm doing and then connect with other people that were doing similar things. So I agree, just asking around and just checking a few of them out to get a feel for it is a really good way to get started. Absolutely. Well, let people know how they can connect with you online, hear your music and also get connected with your podcast and everything that you're doing. Sure. So as an artist, um, that's my full name is John Martin Keith, K E I T H.com is my website. Um, on Facebook, same thing, but uh, I got a page on there. Face, uh, John Mark Keith artist page on there. Uh, my Eden Brook, Eden Brook productions page is on Facebook as well. Um, and you can just friend me. Marty Keith on Facebook if you want to, or like the pages, whatever. Um, and then on Facebook, everything, I do most stuff on Facebook. Okay. Uh, and then the podcast. So you can make a living in the music industry. That whole phrase, if you just type that in on Facebook, then there's a, there's a um, podcast page there that you can link to all the different episodes on and that kind of thing. Um, and then the podcast is on, you know, Apple podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play. It's on mm -hmm. all those. Podbean is where I host mine. So if you're a Podbean listener, then you can go check it out there. And um, let's see, Instagram is at John Martin Keith on Instagram. And so that's where I post a lot of information about the, the podcast and stuff on there as well. I also do consulting services. So if anyone is interested in, you know, we do an hour, hour long consulting um, option for people. And so I've got a, like a, if you listen to the beginning of the podcast, there's a a little sponsorship on there they talk about and so there's like a discount that we'll give for the first time listeners first time caller um, that wants to do a consulting and help kind of walk through steps of you know trying to help help them make some some headway in 
into this crazy world. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I do want to send everybody over, subscribe to Marty's podcast and listen to the episodes that are already out. And then there's a new one every Monday. So uh, right. some more great content coming out from people in the industry. And so I really think my listeners will get a lot out of your show and what you're doing. I want to thank you for giving back to the mu music community and encouraging other artists because there is such a need for that. And that's what I am trying to do on my show as well. So I appreciate yeah. all all that you're doing. Thank you so much for your time today and being on the show. Thank you so much. It's been awesome. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you got a lot out of it and I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel for even more episodes like this coming soon. Also check out rusticsongbird.com forward slash podcast for all the previous episodes with people in the music industry. It is a wealth of knowledge and you'll get a lot out of that as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.